Final Cut Pro offers a new set of tools for applying and adjusting speed changes to your clips. I'll be working with this short sequence from an ESPN show called Speed Freaks. No, I didn't plan that. In order to see what's going on with the clip, click the Toggle Clip Keyframe button in the lower left of the timeline. The Clip Keyframe graph is displayed along with these speed tick marks. There are two types of speed changes you can apply. Constant speed changes, which affect the entire clip speed by the same speed percentage, and variable speed changes that allow you to dynamically alter the speed of the clip over time. To apply a constant speed change to a clip, right-click and choose Change Speed from the menu. A new Change Speed dialog appears with some nifty new options. You can also bring it up by pressing Command-J on your keyboard. Enter a new speed percentage in the Rate field. Any percentage below 100% is considered slow motion, and any percentage above 100% is considered fast motion. You can also change the speed by entering a duration. Here, I'll enter 7 seconds, and the speed percentage is adjusted accordingly. Notice, the original 4 seconds and 10 frame duration is reported for comparison. Because speed changes will alter the duration of your sequence clips, a new checkbox has been added to prevent other clips in your sequence from being affected. As long as the Ripple Sequence checkbox is unchecked, the clip you are applying your speed changes to will keep its original duration. I'll apply the speed change to the clip by pressing Return. As we would expect, the constant speed change is applied uniformly to the clip and the speed ticks appear further apart. Speed ticks that are further apart indicate a speed reduction and speed ticks that are closer together indicate a speed increase. I'll make some additional changes to this clip by selecting the clip and pressing Command-J. There are some new start and end buttons that control the rate of the speed change at the beginning and end of your clip. You can also think of them as speed ramping buttons. By default, the linear from start buttons are selected, which produce no speed ramps. The buttons with curves represent speed ramps that produce smooth speed changes at the beginning and end of your clip using Bezier curves. Once selected, a Bezier curve value is assigned in the start and end length field. Higher values entered here will produce more drastic speed ramps at the beginning and end of your clip while lower values will produce more subtle speed ramps. In most cases, however, you'll find the default value works quite nicely. Press Return to apply the change. If you look at the speed ticks, they pretty much tell the story. The ticks are closer together at both ends of the clip and equidistant at the center of the clip. I'll play the clip back so you can see the result. Notice something else. The clip now says variable which by definition is a clip that changes speed over time. If you double-click the clip with the speed change applied and click the Motion tab in the viewer, you can view your speed changes as points on a graph. A speed keyframe was created at the beginning of the clip and another speed keyframe at the end of the clip. The speed ramps are represented as Bezier curves with control handles for changing the shape of the curve. Notice as I drag upward on the Start Curve handle, the speed ticks in the keyframe graph move closer together. These handles allow you to customize and essentially shape your speed effects. If you bring up the speed dialog, you can see that the custom button is now selected. This means that changes to the speed ramps have been modified in the motion tab. Also notice the length field has also been updated. Final Cut Pro 7 will also allow you to apply speed changes to multiple clips at once. I'm going to copy the speed settings from this clip, select the next three clips in the timeline, and press Option V to bring up the Paste Attributes window. To paste the copied speed, select the Speed checkbox and press Return. All three clips now have the speed settings from the first clip copied to them, including all the speed ramp changes that were made in the Motion tab. I know that this one feature alone will make a few editors I know jump for joy. Until now, we've looked at applying constant and variable speed changes to a clip using the Speed dialog. We'll now take a look at some new speed tools that will make creating and modifying variable speed effects easier than you thought possible. I'll move my play into the next clip of the helicopter taking off and play it back. The time it takes for the helicopter to turn around can be reduced using some of these new tools. I'll park the playhead at the frame before the copter begins its turn, then move the mouse into the speed ticks area where it becomes a pen tool. I'll click once to set a speed keyframe at this frame. When you set the first keyframe, three keyframes are actually created. This is because Final Cut Pro must create a start and end keyframe to create speed segments. But more on that in a moment. I'll now move the playhead to the frame where the helicopter has completed its turn, then click to set another speed keyframe. 
Placing my mouse over the keyframe, a tooltip will appear showing the speed values before and after the keyframe, which currently is at 100%. Dragging to the left increases the speed between the previous keyframe and the one I'm dragging. I'll keep dragging until the speed to the left of the keyframe is just over 600%. Then release the mouse. Notice the ticks between the keyframes are bunched up and the ticks outside of the keyframes are spread out. I'll play this back so you can see the effect. Not bad, but we can make this effect even better with only a few minor adjustments. Now here's where it gets really interesting and really cool. If you look at each keyframe's placement, they essentially divide the clip into segments. Segment one falls between the first and second keyframe, segment two between the second and third keyframe, and segment three between the third and fourth keyframe. Segments allow you to make speed alterations to the clip without affecting other segments. Let me just tell you, this is huge. Let's say I wanted to change the speed of the first segment. Right click on the speed ticks in the first segment and choose Change Speed Segment. The Change Speed Segment dialog appears and looks similar to the first speed change dialog we looked at, but with one major difference. Because variable speed effects never affect the clip duration, the Ripple Sequence button will not be available. Also notice that the duration that is reported is just the segment duration, not the entire clip duration. I'll enter a rate value of 150%. By pressing Tab, the Duration field updates with a new segment duration based on your entered speed. Press Return and the 150% speed is only applied to the first segment. The other segments maintain their original speeds. Let's take a look at the effect. Let's make another segment change. This time, I'll right-click on the speed ticks in Segment 2 and choose Change Speed Segment. As you can see, this segment is much shorter in duration than the previous segment due to the extremely high speed percentage applied to this segment. I'm not interested in changing the speed, only how the speed ramps in and out of the segment keyframes. Selecting these buttons will create Bezier handles on both sides of the keyframe, which will smooth out the transitions coming in and out of the speed segment. Let's take a look at the change. There are also some really useful modifier keys that will help you refine your speed effects. If you hold down the Option key and drag on a keyframe, you can slip the media underneath. As you drag, the canvas becomes a two-up display. Here, I'm option dragging the end keyframe of the second segment to the left in order to make the helicopter complete its turn earlier. The frame on the right displays the updated frame as you drag. Release the mouse when you've finished your slipping. Then play back the effect. Another useful modifier key is the Shift key. By shift dragging on a keyframe, you can alter the speed of the clip on the left side of the keyframe you are dragging without affecting the speed of the clips on the right side of the keyframe. Notice as I shift drag on the start keyframe of the second segment, the first segment's speed is altered, but the speed of the segments to the right of this keyframe are left alone. Let's look at one more tool that has been radically re-engineered, the tool formerly known as the Variable Speed Tool. In the Tool Palette, click and hold on the Slip Tool button to reveal the Speed Tool and select it. In this sequence, I have two clips. The first is a shot of two trucks passing on a desert road, and the second is a shot of a truck driving away into the desert. I want to speed up the shot of the truck's passing and slow down the shot of the truck driving away, while keeping the combined duration of both clips the same. I'll place the tool on the edit point and drag to the left. The canvas becomes a two-up display just like you get when you're using the rolling edit tool. Also, a tooltip appears to inform you how far you have moved the edit point from its original location. When I release the mouse, the first clip has been sped up and the second clip has been slowed down. When the mouse is released, the clip is effectively time-stretched and a new speed percentage is stamped on the clip. If much of your editorial work involves changing the speed of your clips, you're going to love these new speed tools. They're easy to use and most of all, fun to work with. I'm Steve from Ripple Training. Thanks for watching.